be involved and take advantage of these trends. We have virtual reality and augmented reality. We have AI, artificial intelligence that basically change people's faces, answers questions and all of that. We have voice search. And I recently used this recent, I used, recently used the voice search recently on Google, where you're just able to record a song and it will look for the song for you. Maybe you just remember the song from your childhood and you can't remember the title to so just look for your song. And there is um, Alexa, like somebody, everyone used to talk about. There is um, person, personalization, there's influencer marketing, where we have people like Tomike, we have people like Bob Risky, we have people like Tuntu Diki. Basically, there's transparency and authenticity, and there is um, the rise of short form video. So, what I'm just trying to say is that digital marketing is exciting and there are lots of opportunities for you to adapt new trends and just stay ahead. So you can, so you, can, you are able to establish yourself and start something from what you know and what you've been able to, to discover basically. So, and then um, it's impact on businesses when you're able to stay on trends and when you're able to just stay ahead and master these things, these are the impacts. You are able to have increased engagement when you post something. People want to engage with your posts and it's not just engagement alone. People, you are able to convert this engagement to actual customers or actual and loyal and valuable customers. There are some places online that attracted me because of the kind of content that they post online. And from there, I was able to see what they sell and I've become a loyal customer to them. I mentioned earlier on that when you sell things online, it is cost effective. You don't have to start opening shops. You don't have to start paying lots of money yearly for you to be able to maintain your shop or for you to start worrying about um, people breaking into your shops to steal your things at the comfort of your own home be able to put those products and services online so it is basically cost effective improve analytics you're able to have more customers people are you, your business is more exposed it reaches a wide range of people you see people you know, people, somebody in Ibado can see what you are posting online. Whereas someone from, from Ibado cannot see your shop from Lagos here unless somebody tells them about it. There's mobile optimization, video marketing, influencer marketing, like I explained earlier, and personalized marketing, like the one I explained. And this also falls under the content creating um, part where I mentioned that some people, for instance, they use Bob Risky's um, Snapchat voice to market their products. Some we dance using their abaya, the we abaya to attract Muslim customers just to dance and, you know, just indirectly tell them that Salah is coming on, We have, come and buy abaya from me. You, When you wear this, you look like this, something like that. So that's basically it. And that concludes our training for today. Tomorrow, your next topic will be common digital marketing terms that you should know. So if you have any questions in regards to this, kindly raise your hand and I will answer you shortly. You can just raise your hand and I will just go back. I think somebody is typing something in the comment section. Okay. Mr. Ikudayo, do you have a question? Okay. Or anybody? Okay, Mr. Mayola, this guy. Yeah, so I'm I'm taking the uh, terms you should know today. I I don't know if I heard you say tomorrow. Okay, so it's today. So yes, yes. So we take that, then we we ask questions and we are done. Yeah. Okay, so the next topic is common digital marketing things you should know. So if you have questions from slide one to slide eight. You can drop it in the comment section. So Mr. Mayawa will start from um, slide nine now. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Amy. Thank you very much. Uh, that was a uh, insightful and uh, well robust. Yeah. So so uh, I hope you guys are, are following. So like I said earlier, like we are trying to uh, let you understand the concept of digital marketing, the benefits of digital marketing, why digital marketing is 
better than any any other type of marketing you can think of which are the 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 points she gave about being cost effective it is way cheaper for you to run ads on facebook than for you to put a billboard uh on third Milan beach for example or to, to put a billboard uh let's say at Oworo or anywhere if you if you've been if you you've been in marketing or you've done a little bit of traditional outdoor marketing before you know how much it costs to get these things done or how much it costs to put a billboard in an air airport for example so there's cost effectiveness there is uh you can measure your performance which means you can actually track your customers you can know where they are coming from you can know you can understand your customer's behavior, which leads to personalization, which is also part of the things she raised, meaning you can now tailor your marketing and your, your content, your communication to specific customers. Because why can you do that? Because you, you, you have enough data, which is the analytics, Google Analytics, uh, uh, website performance and all of that stuff. Because you have those things, can it allows you to be able to track customers performance track uh, customers behavior track your ad performance sorry ad performance customer behavior then it allows you to personalize your marketing which means you can now market and talk in the language your audience wants to hear and it also allows you to make more informed decision your it, it makes allows you to make take more marketing decisions you know okay i'm going i'm, I'm supposed to market to people uh at this particular age range i'm not supposed to market to people in this age group these people in this age group are not a uh, uh, are not a part of the my audience they don't they are not in my demographics which are part of the things we will eventually get to talk about where we we, we in the overall digital marketing strategy that I, I talked about yesterday that we would have as a capstone project you have to be able to analyze your audience and know the right audience that, that for your for your for your marketing and also understand the channels when you say channels now you are talking about is it facebook now is it instagram is it google is it uh, TikTok? is it uh, twitter where are my audience is it linkedin is it reddit is it quora and all of that so these are the the, the benefits you get when you use digital marketing compared to traditional marketing uh, plus the fact that data marketing goes way faster and wider than your traditional marketing can get for example radio now when you are doing radio adverts ra ra radios in lagos don't necessarily have reach in kaduna but i can run ads from my room now and target people in kaduna or people in kogi or people in nasarawa without leaving my room you understand so these are why data marketing is taking taking the spot and even newspapers now are are uh, uh, like now going digital now you see most of these newspapers traditional newspapers use uh, the social media platforms especially twitter to market to to post their contents and share articles they don't they don't depend on the paper printing again because it's even expensive to get the machines to print those papers to put those contents together in typing and all of that stuff but this is just something you can upload on uh, on your blog and everybody can read from wherever they don't necessarily have to wait for a vendor to 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 disturb them in the neighborhood and sell papers to them or have to go to the junction to get these papers so these are well uh, the benefits i'm just trying to buttress on what everything yemi said these are the benefits of digital marketing why it's taking taking the spots and which is why you should also be in this in this uh field and also why you have to stay on top of your game and be and follow the trends. So I was talking about uh, trends and its impact on businesses. Digital marketing is a space where you, you can't be left behind. If you are not following with what everyone is doing, then you become stale. Your ideas and strategies would not necessarily work as they would have if you are up to date in your marketing strategies so she also mentioned about uh, the outbound and inbound marketing and she gives examples of this and traditional and uh, digital marketing basically so like i said i'll be going on the uh, digital marketing terms you should know so these are these terms we'll probably be using 
as we go on so they don't they don't sound strange to you so i'm just going to explain some of these things to you so you understand so that's like slide uh, second. slide nine yeah so when we say a and b testing a and b testing of split testing this is a term we use to uh, when we want to run ads or when we are testing strategies it's a way of like like they say you don't know don't know it all and you don't assume that you know everything so you we can't even when we do we do our research we do the audits we do the we develop our strategy we do the demographics we understand our audience we still have to like test things out to know what works best what should we channel our energy on because resources are limited regardless of regardless of what type of business you have regardless of what level the business is a medium scale large scale business even large scale businesses there are always limitations to what you can do for example yesterday i think uh apple launched the their ar more of like the augmented reality we're talking about uh i don't even i don't know how to to explain it but some of you might have been to shop right where you have this camera you wear on your face and uh, you start seeing uh you are you is more like you are inside a particular place where you see a lot of things going on and you see people scared and all of that so something like that but now it's uh for for personal use not necessarily what they use it for in shop right where you they are they are trying to get you into the thrill and all of that you can actually operate operate it like a device watch movies on it and operate it with uh, gestures so these things now for example before you know it now marketing starts going into it in a way where you have to start creating content that will fit into that ahar or augmented reality you understand so these are the, the reasons why i said you have to follow the trends but you also have to know that there are limitations if to get it now it costs probably like three thousand five hundred dollars or something so for a device that costs probably that much your 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 spent to run ads on that kind of platform would would definitely not be the same thing you spend on facebook people run ads on facebook for 500 naira so these limitations are why you should do enough testings and know where to channel your resources so that you don't make mistakes of spending on things that don't necessarily bring give you the the return on ad spend that you would you would have gotten when you use the right channel so it's one of the re reasons why you have to understand the channels you have you are using and also split test and split testing does not split test and a and b testing are the same thing so it's not necessarily about channels as well it's about your ads your ad copies your your ad creatives are you testing with videos it is common knowledge that videos perform better than graphics so when if you if you have the resources to shoot a video why are you doing only graphics then you're just wasting your money so you have to know that you split test with videos you split test with your audience so you can even you if you as we go on with uh, facebook ads we get to, to a point where we have to uh, build audience you have to select your audience depending on your research now you have to select age groups so there are sometimes you select interest and demographics but you have to understand that Split testing also involves having audience A and audience B, they're running your ads to both these audiences and seeing which audience performs better, which audience look at or react and uh, respond to your ads more. So you know these audience are better to channel my, my, my adverse to than this audience. For example, uh, in some of the businesses I've, I've managed, starting at first you don't have any audience audience uh, data so you have to start creating those data which is something we also go into as we go on where you when you track your audience you have their data on facebook then you can generate look-alike audiences from this audience so it gets to a point where for example those look-alike audiences now will definitely uh, would start to perform more than the original traditional audience you have generated why because the look-alike audience are using what we call uh, the uh, the algorithm. Facebook algorithm is targeting people that have re responded and reacted to your adverts before. So that gives you a better chance of 
response engagement rates because these people are almost they have similar behaviors online like the people that have interacted with your business before you run an ad probably and you reach like two thousand people and 50 people reached out to you 50 people commented so facebook is now going to target your audience target your another ad now and create a mirror of this set of people and show your ads to them so for that kind of ads now you will definitely get more results than just running to a traditional audience that you think are the ones that would relate to your ad so these are reasons why we do split testing and a and b testing so that you can uh get the right people that and target the right audience and channel your resources to the right people so then there's affiliate marketing affiliate marketing and that one is common almost everybody knows that that's like commission based type of marketing where you where you you subcontract or you give your marketing to to individuals and they get commission for for the number of people they bring in so that's affiliate marketing for you most businesses do that we have like the i think Gigi was doing that one time jumia was doing that at a particular point as well uh most brands on the in their early stages do something like that and they've also improved on it some do it as a this referral kind of marketing where they ask you to refer your friends and you get bonuses but now the commission the athlete marketing is a is a notch higher than that because now you are getting it's not the one where you get under naira and all of that you are getting real commission people that do car businesses and sell cars also use affiliate marketing more so the way you sell cars and they tell you you get 20 percent on every car you every customer you bring and, and buy who buys a car so that's affiliate marketing yeah is an aspect of digital marketing but it's not something me i rely mostly on but for the way it is related to digital marketing would be now you uh automating these things and making it more digital rather than the traditional way where i have a customer that wants to buy a car now i just tell the customer to follow me to your shop then you you tell you negotiate and you say okay ah, this person bought the car for 3.5 million then 20 percent of that is like 700k take your 700k but now what you do is you have affiliate links these affiliate links are tracked where anybody that uses your link to access the particular website of a brand i think i saw a, a video of somebody is it on TikTok now where they were talking about joining the affiliate marketing for louis vuitton so some brands have affiliate links uh, affiliate marketing page on their website where you generate a link unique link these links are tracked so for every person that clicks on your link and goes to the website on the google analytics dashboard which we will touch uh, as we go on with our classes you get to see where your odd your cost your website visitors are coming from so when you see that you can easily track like i said that is why you track performance you can measure and you can measure performance and track your visitors so you can know where mr xy came from so from there you know you already have your calculations of commissions that goes to the person that brought so so and so person to your page and and the person made the purchase so that's affiliate marketing then we have a content strategy content strategy we we'll definitely will touch that in content marketing you know what content is you know what strategy is add both together is like your overall uh methods and uh, uh plans to actually for your content to actually create good content that would generate the right results for you so that's your overall content strategy what plan do you have in your content strategy how many days do you want to be posting what time are you posting what channels are you posting what type of content are you posting on so so and so be for example with uh, Ark City now we have a content plan we have a content calendar all this falls under content strategy so what post goes on Monday what post goes on Tuesday what post goes on Wednesday do we create a video content for Thursday do we do we have tech memes for Friday do we do TGIF posts do we celebrate holidays and all of these things are what encompasses into your content strategy to determine what route are we going with our content what kind of content do we want people to know us for so for example she gave an example with Airtel the Airtel video thing with uh, 
uh, where in-laws, the in-laws kind of thing, that's content marketing, that's content strategy, there's a strategy behind that, that all you see. The, uh, there is this one, Jumia does again, uh, forgotten the name, with GTB. I think they collab, they had they collab with GTB. So there is that as well. So these things are strategy. The overall strategy for content will determine how people see your business. So when we get to content marketing, we will talk about the advantages of having content, content strategy, the advantages of having a content strategy that would eventually stamp your brand authority. So eventually when we get to content marketing, we will dive more into that. But for the meantime, you know what content strategy is about. Then you know conversion rate. Conversion rate is the percentage of people that come to your website and actually take a desired action. So your conversion is your action. What do you want them to do? Do you want them to fill a form? Do you want them to make a purchase? Do you want them to sign up for your webinar? Do you want them to download your your ebook or whatever? Depending on what your your conversion is your desired action. What action do you want these people to take? That action is your conversion. So the conversion rate now is the percentage of people that eventually that takes that desired action from the total number that eventually gets to your website. So there is number of there is impressions. There is we we'll definitely go into all of that. So conversion rate, like I said, is the percentage of people that a percentage of website visitors that take the desired action. Yeah. So when you send on 1,000 people to your website, how many of those 1,000 actually signed up for your for your uh, ebook or downloaded your ebook? Sorry, signed up for your webinar, signed up for your newsletter, make made a purchase. Depending on what you want them to do, registered for your training. Your desired action is your conversion. The percentage of people that actually takes that desired action is the conversion rate. So it's rate is in percentage. You have like a, your the number of of people that takes the action over the total number of people that came to your website times a hundred. Then you get your percentage for conversion rate. So conversion rate differs depending on uh, industries. For for uh, tech industry is different. For e-commerce is different. For uh, depending on what industry, hospitality industry, the conversion rate is different. So these are things that you would eventually get to know more about when you start delving deep into uh, digital marketing. So the CPA, you call it cost per acquisition. That is how much does it cost you to get one person? How much does it cost you to, to, to get one conversion? So that's your cost per acquisition. That's your CPA. The CPC cost per click. How much does it get cost you for one person to click on your ad? So when somebody sees your ad on on Facebook now, per click you pay per click. There is pay per click. That's the PPC. <laughs> so oh, there is cost per click. But the the payment structure for Facebook is going from Google. Google is mostly the PPC one where you only pay for a click, and that happens with search ads. Search ads. So for search ad is the Google search ad where you when you search something on Google the first two three uh, results you see there is an an ad icon on the side those are search results so those are ad, ad, ad search ad results so those search ads now they, they they charge you when somebody clicks on them if nobody clicks on them you are not going to pay however the twist to this is the the lower the number of people that clicks on your ad, the higher your, your pay per click, the higher you pay for one click, if you understand that logic. Because nobody is clicking on your ads does not mean you won't eventually pay. For example, let's do this example now. I don't know if anybody, anybody's following me. It's not like I'm just talking. Are you guys here? Can I see emojis if you guys are here listening to me? Okay, so I'm seeing emojis from only the admin. I need emojis from the students. Faith, uh, Mr. Sojide, Laura, Grace, Ekundayo. Yeah, nice. Sorry, I, I don't know. Yesterday, my, my own section was quite boring as well. I don't know, probably because it contains uh, all the boring aspects of digital marketing. Uh, Yemi already told you the, the sweet ones. Yeah, so. Like I was saying, so we are at. Uh, so let me explain the logic now. So you you have an ad on Google, 
you a search ad your search ad is only triggered when your keyword is typed for example let's say accity now so your set your keyword that you are paying for is uh learn ui ux or uh, or, or i want to learn ui ux let's say learn ui ux is the keyword now so there are long tail keywords and short short uh, short tail keywords we'll definitely get to those ones so you have your keyword what you are targeting is learn ui ux right so someone someone punches that into google and your ad comes out yeah you're not the only one offering this training now another person is offering the training another person so let's say three or four of you guys no not three, not four most times three two pops up on the results as a sponsored ad you have like uh Act city then you have another training company but somebody clicks the other training company Act is not going to pay because my ad was not clicked right however my my cost per click would increase because my ad has been showing up nobody's clicking so that that would all these things are intertwined we eventually get to add relevance and quality score and all of that so now nobody's clicking my ad right so i'm not paying you might be chilling oh i'm not paying now but when somebody clicks you are going to pay for the cost you are going to pay for that one and five people are clicked. So I have like I reached a thousand people, five people clicked. My cost per one click of this five thousand now is five over one hundred, right? So that's your cost per click for for that five clicks. But for somebody who has one click in a thousand, it's going to cost more. That one click is costing more than what is costing for five people. It's simple maths, yeah. So then there's cost per thousand CPM or cost per mile. Cost per mile is the cost per a thousand people reached. So you are, so depending on so when you are running your ads down, depending on the platforms, there are these uh, these uh, languages will come up, these terms will come up. You have to understand them, and sometimes they give you the option to select how you want to be, you want to pay, how you want to be charged. Do you want to be charged per click? Do you want to be charged per acquisition? Do you want to be charged per thousand? Per thousand means now for every one thousand person that sees your ad, you are paying. So these things are, are different and they also have add objectives to them. So when we delve when we delve into this, we'll get to know more about it. When you are running ads for conversion, there are certain types of, of uh, payment plans that you would you will be uh, you are allowed to do. When you are running ads for just uh, brand awareness, for example, you just want people to see you. You want people to see you, you are you don't care about the action they take eventually. What you are concerned about is you want people to see you. There is brand awareness. There is reach. You just want to. There is reach and there is there is brand awareness. For the reach now, you just want everybody to see you. For brand awareness, you want people to see you and remember you. So for reach now, your ad is just showing to everybody. They have to, they probably see it just one time, and they might not even know they've seen your ad before. But for brand awareness now, that one they will see your ad like one or twice. So there's frequency of how you want people to see that. So they see it like one or two times. That makes, that would eventually kind of register it in their head and they know, okay, I saw. So you can ask them two to three days later and they tell you, oh, yeah, I saw I saw an ad on social so so But for reach alone, what you, the reach is like, well, I don't know why even there's one of the poor ways to actually run an ad. You just want to see a thousand people to see you, two thousand people, three thousand people. What you care about is the number of people that see you. You are not concerned about the number of people that can actually remember your brand, that actually know that they saw your content, or the number of people that actually take your desired action, which is the conversion. Yeah. So now we go to CRM, yeah, customer relationship management. So customer relationship management is a system that 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 is used to store customers' information, is used to uh also keep customer data and uh, send tailored messages to customer based on their behavior so customer relationship system is actually very wide and uh you might necessarily not utilize them to the extreme depending on where you get to work some people might, might some data marketers might might not have used any customer relationship management software before like i said yesterday in the orientation as well 
when you know, when your know, digital marketing is a very broad field and you have to be open-minded about software as a service tools that's SaaS. they call it SaaS. s-a-s i didn't include that here so i'm supposed to include it software as a service so these things are are softwares that make of your overall work easier and your some companies might get to allow you to use some some might not some is way over the budget because most of these things you have to pay on a monthly basis so i've had the opportunity to use crm systems I've used uh, Engage Baby, I've used Convert Kit. I think MailChimp is also trying to do something into that way because it's kind of uh, closer to email marketing as well. So for customer relationship management system, what it does is it kind of uh, automates your communication with your customer based on their, their what do I call it now, their behavior. So it allows you for to do personalized marketing, which was one of the advantages of digital marketing, where you can send messages to customers based on the reaction, their action and inactions, if I would say, on your website, on every other part. So you see some, so that's why you see some brands, whenever you go to their website, they tell you sign up for a newsletter. Why they're asking to sign up for a newsletter, your newsletter is so that they can add you to their customer relationship management system and they can automate messages to you and build email sequences as well that would actually, that are tailored for you necessarily no not necessarily you as in let's say myself my wife or let's say let me look for somebody's name here let's say laura hell or grace etta yeah you know, you when you get these messages you will definitely see your name there but it's not like they actually know you one-on-one -on -one. but based on your 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 actions on their websites or your responses to their emails they have segmented you with a couple of other customers that have the same set of behaviors so when they are sending the communications it resonates with you like oh these people know me personally but it's actually the work of the customer relationship management system so there's always most times when you see customer relationship management systems you have the the sales part you have the marketing part the sales part is mostly handled by sales people the sales personnel those that close the deals those that make the calls so there's always a thin line between digital marketing and sales so sometimes when you get jobs they try to put everything together and ask you to do everything but you have to understand there's a clear gap between sales and marketing so on the CRM now the sales people also get to use it they use it for to close deals track deals when I talk when I say deals I mean customer now you want the customer to take an action you want the customer to make a purchase do you want to include calling so those are part of the things you can do with the CRM you can actually call from the CRM you can send book SMS from the CRM you can build landing pages from the CRM you can send email newsletters from the CRM you can do quite a lot you can even you can even uh post some CRMs allow you to post on your website on your social media platforms from the crm so depending on like i said you don't get to use all of these tools it's not like when you want to get a job now they have to tell you have, they would ask you to go and use all the old software as a service in the old world just be open-minded and try to tr get your hands on as many software as you can so that allows you to to be able so when once you are tech savvy and you're open-minded about things you'll be inquisitive google use your youtube check for videos about these things and all of that you get to know how to use this and most of these software as a service tools have a what do i call it they have a, a customized uh uh what do i call it now uh pressing i would answer you you can contact your customer service they can put you through how to use all of these things so we move to CTA call to action. CTA is your call to action. For every communication, there's, there's, there should be an objective. Why are you sending this content out? Do you want them to take a desired action? When you are running out, there should be an action. What do you want them to do? Do you want them to sign up? Then you put your sign up. Do you want them to learn more? So this CTA are also kind of tied to your landing page. When you send a CTA for somebody to sign up, you don't take the person to a page where the person is reading a whole lot of stuff. Anybody that is clicking on sign up is actually ready to sign up for what you want them to sign up for. So do you want this person to sign up for for a, a program? Do you want them to sign up for a webinar? Do you want to sign up for a newsletter? 
if you are putting learn more then you should take them to a page where they know more about what they want to do not a page that just pops up a form on them and tells them to fit or you you have a learn more button then you just take the person to a product and ask the person to buy so your cta has to be in line with your landing page where are you directing that landing page is landing page here okay it's the landing page is where you eventually your your the part of your website where you want people to take action most uh digital marketers will tell you that you don't necessarily have to take people to the home page of your website because when you take people to the home page of the website they might get lost and won't necessarily take the desired action you want them to take so when you are running your ads now there are also there are also stages of running ads where you run your ads first of all for brand, brand awareness you want people to know more about your brand so when you run those type of ads brand awareness ads you can direct them to your website let them check your home page out see what is on your home page navigate through the website and check things out on yourself but when you run ads for example for a product web product ad let's say jumia now they run ads for a shoe you are seeing a, a stiletto for example for ladies now you see a stiletto ad then you click on buy you are not expecting them to take you to the home page of jumia where you now probably have to start sorting by categories to go to females then shoes then you now start looking for that exact shoe stiletto what you expect is when you click that stiletto it takes you to the product page that's a landing page now for that particular product it takes you straight to the product page where you can make a purchase so whoever is clicking an ad that says buy buy is the cta right when you run ads now there's always these small buttons i don't know we all know what it what you we, we've all come, come across what the cta is right do i need to show you a, an example you want me to show you an example Is anybody there? Do you want an example of a CTA or should I just go on? Yes. Okay, you want me to show you an example. Let me just go to Google now, show you CTA is. You see it every day when you run ads, uh, when you run ads on, when you see ads on Facebook, they ask you to take a particular action. Second. at least we can just take a take a breath with what we are doing so for example this now yeah let me just share my screen quickly so can you see this now this learn more button here now this is what they call the cta your call to action what do you want this person to do say learn more so when the person clicks learn more they want to learn more when you click learn more you don't want to buy when you click learn more you are not interested in signing up however when you run your ads now you, when you click learn more it takes them to the page you can have a section where you now tell the person sorry you now tell the person to buy because they that, that's you are fulfilling what you said they are learning more and when they learn more they feel they begin to buy you can optimize your website to pop up a buy button or whatever button or sign up for a newsletter kind of thing and you see another one here i hope you guys can see my screen this is a shop now so and whoever clicks this knows they want to shop right so those are these are ctas for facebook this is a win a free 12 month membership it's giving you one year membership for a gym or is it a dance class now so you click sign up once you click sign up you know you want to sign up you don't want to click sign up and now go to where now go to a page where you're asked to 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 read an article or download an ebook that's not what you want to do you want to sign up for the free 12 month membership right so you should always have your cta should be straight to the point and direct but most of the time when you run ads on these platforms they they almost all the time have their own ctas already you can't actually put in your own like sometimes you might want to write your own text some platforms allow that i think some parts of google will allow you to put in what you what you want your cta to be but some there's just the generic learn more buy now sign up uh, and all of that so that is what cta is about yeah then ctr click through rates that is the percentage 
at of people who sees your ad and click. So this click through rate is the number of people who actually sees your ad and click. So that's the rate percentage of people that saw the ad and click. So that's the CTR. It's also the same percentage. You divide the number of people that actually clicked by the number of people that saw the ad times 800. Then you get your CTR. CTR can range from 0.20%, some is 0.50, 2%, depending on industries. Like I said, there are industries to this thing. So you should always go your industry, know the average CTR for that industry. So you can always know when you are performing, your ads are performing below, below average. And even Facebook now, the, there is a part where when you are running Facebook ads from the ad manager, you will see a part where they write engagement ranking, they write conversion ranking, and they tell you if your ad is average or below average. So whenever you are running ads, it's always important that you know you don't just run ads and leave them. You have to continue editing and working on them, optimize them, improve them so that you can get the desired results that you want. So then there's engagement rate. Engagement rate is the percentage of people that actually engage with your ads. So when you see rates, this percentage it is always the, the SI unit for rates in digital marketing is percentage. So whenever you see rates, it's always graded in percentage. So engagement rate is the number of people that saw your ad and actually, that, that, so not necessarily add your content and engage with it, the likes, the share, the comments, the yeah like share comments yeah that's engagement so then the sales funnel for sales funnel is uh your your sales funnel is like the the stage of your co co customer journey what's the customer journey like how did you how did you get to this customer did they come from an affiliate link which is what we're talking about affiliate marketing did somebody send them a link did they join from google did they join from your facebook ad then that's your sales phone. It tells you, okay, for example, somebody joins from Facebook, they went to your website, from your website homepage, they navigated to your product page, they clicked on the product, they didn't buy, they added to cart and they logged out. That's the sales phone. Have they, have they made the, the conversion? Have they converted? No, because they've not bought the product. So that's your sales funnel and your consumer journey. So from your sales funnel, you can know, okay, people are stopping at at the product page, they're adding to cart, but they are not buying. Do I have a technical issue with my with my payment page? Are people paying on the platform or they are using a third party app to pay? Is there a glitch that is not making them make the purchase? So these are the reasons why you need these things. And it's also why digital marketing is beautiful. You can you can track you can narrow down reasons why people are not taking the required action you want them to take. Do I have too many texts? Am I speaking too many grammar? Or is there a confusing message in what I wrote here that is not making this person take this desired action? So that's what sales funnel is about. It, 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 it's a funnel. You know what a funnel is now? Like, uh, I don't know if people use this funnel again. This funnel they use in the markets to sell oil and all of that stuff into cakes. So that funnel, it shows from the is big at the top and tiny at the bottom right so it takes in everything where are they coming from this is coming from uh so it's more like a sieve right it narrows down to the desired action which is make a purchase download something register for something buy something so those so it narrows this down telling you that not necessarily everybody that gets to your to your page to your website will definitely buy at the end of the day but it gives you an overall view of your consumer journey where are they coming from where where are the issues where do are they stopping what is making them stop at this point what action can i take people going to particular websites and it's going to be because all the time when you Look at your funnel, you check your
konusu my journey you know google analytics is a way you can see how your consumer move from one point to So you know where you are growing, where so you are running out yeah. so when you have software you can easily see them when you journey to buy out of to search in on your foot. Why? Who do things on their phone? They are always on the go, and they are they are less because customers are coming patients. So the necessary wounds. Hi, Myola. I Hello. think Hello. your Hello. network Hello. is. Yeah, the one trying to buy. So you are like, oh, and you don't see the Oh. Maya, can you hear me, please? Ah, sorry, guys. I don't know where. Where did you okay. guys? It's clear now. Me? Where do you? What do you mean? Where do you mean? So I can go back. At the start of okay, it's breaking again. At the start of this current world. What did you say, sorry? At the start of the current world. When you when you started introducing sales funnel. He 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 dropped out of the call to join again. So he's going to rejoin. He wants to fix his internet issue. Hi guys, can you hear me? Yes. So sorry, sorry for that. I don't know what's wrong. I'd like my Etel and engine has been acting up all day. I don't know what else I'm going to use now. So just pardon me. So yeah, so I was talking about sales funnel, right? Did you guys hear yes. me too? Sales funnel. No, that, that is where you were. Yeah, sales funnel, right? So, like I was saying, with sales funnel, I said you have to track your. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Okay. So, with sales funnel, yeah, I said you have to always track your cu customer's journey so you can know where you have issues, probably with your website or with your communication from whatever platform you are driving them from. You have to understand the you have to outline the customer journey and make sure it is a seamless one. So your sales funnel has to be seamless, little or no stories. If you are asking the person to go to this, we let the person go to that page straight forward, not uh, going from here, trying to get information that is not ne necessary for you. So these are, like I said, I said, because of the way everything is now digitalized, more pe people do more things online. And there are a lot of scams as well. So for your brand to be to be trusted, you have to remove all these glitches. Yeah, it's not always easy, but it's advisable you do that so that you can, you will not lose people. Yeah, so your bounce rate will definitely reduce when you have a website that is loading very fast and everything is in the right place. It's easy to navigate. We always talk about that when we get to SEO, about what the things you should have on your website. So we have keyword stuffing. Yeah, keyword stuffing is a language used in, uh, uh, we use that language for search ads, search ads and SEO. When you're running ads on, on Google search engine, or you're you are trying to optimize your website, 
to be to be you optimize your website for search engine you have to understand that some people try to be tricky and you know what they do they try to stuff their contents with keyword you see people writing things like okay your keyword is learn ui ux then you go like uh do you want to learn ui ux we will allow you learn ui ux so that you will know how to 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 let's say let me be a little bit let me give let me make it more uh i don't know like let me not be as as dull as it can be like so you have like okay do you intend to learn ui ux you can learn ui ux with axity if you want to learn ui ux we are your best best bet you know stuff like that now because you are you learn ui ux is your keyword now you are stuffing the old content your ads content now your website content now your landing page content with the same thing and it's not making sense so once google sees that they kind of punish you for that and they the what do i call it now they reduce your quality score for your website so they downgrade the website and you have issues that's what keyword stuffing is about in layman terms here yeah, you can look for the dictionary meaning by yourself but that's what keyword stuffing is basically about then there's lead generation lead generation is when you say leads these are potential customers yeah how do you generate leads you generate leads by giving them forms to fill right you generate leads by adding them to your newsletter so you can do remarketing your email newsletter. So that's basically lead generation. When you generate, you generate leads by taking customers' data. You can also generate leads by uh, through pixels, Facebook pixels. Now, when we get to Facebook pixels, is what we use to track customers. You track people that visited your website. You can track people that visit your Facebook page or Instagram page. So from there you have an information about them then you can just use that for remarketing or retargeting retargeting is now targeting people that have seen your ad before but they've not taken the action then you target them again then remarketing is people that have actually registered for your email newsletter you are now marketing to them because they've not taken the action targeting happens on a social media platform while remarketing mostly happens through email yeah so that lead generation is getting customer data from your ads which is through asking them to fill forms there are lead gen forms when you run ads on facebook you can run ads and, and generate automated forms where people just what information do you need basic most of the time emails phone numbers email phone numbers and the thing and last thing email phone number and my last thing that's basically what you need for lead generation so you can do that by offering something download my ebook you only have to download your ebook then you put in them you tell them to fill a form for you to do that like which day i was trying to download uh, a content calendar template for up from upspot it's a free template anyways but they tell they told me to download take these few steps what are the steps who my first name and last name after that the next step is for me to put my email then i can download yeah it's a free template right they are giving me for free what do they want in return my email why do they need my email because they see me as a potential buyer and they want to convert me which is the conversion we're talking about so they sell to me with remarketing campaigns from emails that's why they need my email so that's lead generation so lead generation is also important depending on the industry you are working in the brand you are working for it might work for you it might not work it might be a brand you might necessarily but lead generation is is uh, can work across board in different ways for some brands what well, they just tell you join our newsletter you join the newsletter probably because you feel they have information you would need then you join their newsletter so they can send you this uh information probably on a weekly basis probably there's a newsletter about digital marketing trends now that i joined then they try to they, they, i join that they, i send my emails to them they have my emails with me they can use my emails for any other they can while they are sending me the newsletter for digital marketing trends they can only sell something to me as well that's why it's important to lead generation lead gen lead generation is a very important in digital marketing so you have data you have customers data customers data is important for remarketing and retargeting so there is a ROAS return on ad spend this is your return on your ad spend it's straightforward 
how much are you spending for ad? How much is your return? Your return is also the same. Return on ad spend, a ROAS is also the same that ROI, but ROI will probably be more uh, in, uh, in tune with every other industry. But for ROAS, is basically for digital marketing because we are the one running the ads, right? But return on investment can be for any other type of, any department in an organization can be asked, okay, we are spending so so and so amount on what is our return on investment you understand what i'm saying but it's a term that because return on investment can be used by any other industry but return on ad spend yeah basically for digital marketing because we are the ones spending money on ads so some businesses would always want to know their return on ad spend and their calculations to these things but the calculations are not like uh what do i call it now uh overly acceptable universally depending on depending on how you intend to, what metrics you are measuring, you can determine how much you are spending on that and how much are you getting back. For example, a brand that, that okay, one customer for a brand, who, who, a purchase from that customer will probably be, let's say, $1,000, right? Then you are spending, then your monthly, your monthly budget for ad is probably $800. Then at the end of spending $800 in a month, you have like 10 customers, $1,000 per customer times 10, that's like uh, $10,000, right? So your return on ad spend now is after removing, what would I call it now? You remove your total uh, cost for running the ad, which is $800. But at the end of the day, there are always metrics to these things. You want to you want to remove your ad spend, you also have to consider, did you, did you, sub, did you uh, give the design, the graphics design designer to create the graphics, you pay for that. Did you generate video content? Did you use influencer? There was a particular company I worked with at the time, e-commerce. Yeah, we 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 did influencer marketing with uh, Laura KG. She did a video for us. That's the spending on ad, right? She did the video. We paid that money. I think at 200k or some or something around 2019, 2020. So that's you spent on the ad, right? But we took that video now, uploaded it on our website, and we ran ads with it. So now we spent 200k on getting her to do the video she converted we got conversions from her on her page now so for the 200k she spent the number of people we get and the purchase they make will determine how much return we, we on the ad spend but you have to understand is it a one-time purchase people for example we are an e-commerce where we, we sell full stuff uh, straight from the market now you probably buy today and you are buying tomorrow and buying next tomorrow which are some of the issues that is with return on ad spend you don't necessarily you can't uh get the accurate data on what you spend because now somebody might see your ad and they are not buying today they are not buying this month when you spent the money and they are buying the following month probably because somebody is out of the country and they just saved your your content and when they are back into the country they want to buy would you would you uh, attribute that purchase to the current ad or the previous ad so, so those are some of the uh inconsistencies in measuring return on ad spend which is why i said it is not universal depending on the organization they can determine what they want to measure for return on ad spend but the overall thing you need to know is the return on ad spend is the how much your return on investment same thing as roi how much you get on social and amounts you spend so there's relevancy score and quality score which is what i was talking about when i was talking about uh, i mentioned it when i was talking about is it cost per acquisition or, or cost per click yeah, relevancy score and quality score is the, the the quality of your of your landing page now does it correlate does it uh, resonate with your ad if you are running an ad you you say you search for a keyword that says learn ui ux right that's your keyword that you are paying for on google search then when people click your ad it takes them to a page where they are they are talking about web development your quality score and relevance is called relevance is it relevant to the ad no it drops so which the relevancy score and quality score is also a way uh, google uh, google knows which ad they are to show and which ads they are not to show for example jumia and conga now i think conga has gone as merged with jumia conga is no more when conga was they they would normally run at they, are, they were targeting jumia as a keyword so what they do is when you punch key Jumia on on a, on Google, Conga pops up, Jumia pops up. You understand? So now is Jumia relevant to Conga 
yeah is relevant in a way why because they are direct competitors whatever you, you think you want to buy on jumia you can also buy on on conga so they don't get punished for that because it's kind of relevant but whereas where you are running you have an ad that says you you that you are into let's say the full stuff company i was talking about where you buy direct from the market uh full stuff then i'm targeting jumia then people click my ad and it takes in them takes them to a page that says buy pepper directly from the market whereas the person that targeted then the person goes out that's that's bounce rate right as your bounce rate increases google understands that your website and this keyword are not relevant they're to each other they don't they are not uh, a match then your ads your appearance for that particular keyword reduces that is where you see where mr a and mr b are spending the same amount on a particular ad but mr a is ranking higher than mr b because the content on mr a's landing page relates and resonates more with the keyword than the content of mr b i hope you understand that that is a relevancy score and quality score yeah then we go to sem or search engine marketing yeah sem is a more like a, the brother to seo seo is organic uh, optimization you optimize your website with their 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 industry industry strategies to do that we have everything to get into that going forward oh we have like 19 minutes left i think i was going to take this number so uh, sorry about that guys so uh i'll just wrap up so they are their uh seo is organic why sem is paid now you want your your website is new but you want your website to be in the top ranking website when they search for your for a keyword that is particular to your business then you have to pay to get to pop up but if you have a well grounded seo and you've been in the business for a long time longevity also matters then your website will naturally jumia probably might not necessarily have to run ads on search engine marketing again for jumia when you start jumia jumia pops up you don't need to pay for it probably five years ago they'll be paying for that but now they won't pay again so sem is paid why seo is organic right target audience is your audience who are you targeting where are they from who are the audience that are specific to your business that are ready to buy from you that's your target audience. landing page i explained earlier is your where you direct people to from wherever they are coming from from your ads where are they going to on the part what part of your website are they going to the part that is important that is uh, relevant to what they are they want that is your landing page then we have the website versus web page i think there's a link to that here i have a link to it i'll just copy the link i'll drop in the comment section here so you can know more about the website the difference between a website and a web page yeah so yeah you can read about that there so i think i'll be rounding up now sorry for boring you with all these uh, digital marketing terms but it's important to know these things they are they are necessary for you to excel whenever you have interviews for example when you use these terms people know okay this person knows what they are saying it's not like you just come and you are just they're asking you what is cta and you are saying you don't know nobody's going to take you seriously yeah so thank you very much guys I don't know. Is the question section now? Is Yemi here, please? Can you? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, sorry for taking so much time. Hey, do you have any questions in regards to everything that has been taught today in today's class? If you have any questions, you can drop it in the comment section, please. We'll just give some time for that. Uh, that means there are no questions, right? Abby? Is anybody here? Okay, thank you for your response, Stephanie. Okay. Stephanie said no question. 
Okay. Uh, Mr. Sojide said sometimes it takes time to navigate the chat and post. Yeah, but you can always unmute your mic and and just raise your hand, use the raise hand button, then you raise your hand to to, to speak. Yeah. So so like like uh, Yemi said, there are going to be review questions. So to uh, if you understand what we discussed today, but from tomorrow we'll probably be going into more technical aspect of it. Probably be showing not necessarily talk 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 like this showing you things and every other thing that you, you might necessarily need so tomorrow we'll be showing you what, some more stuff and i don't know if you're joining with your phone now it might become very tiny for you to see these things but for today we just have to cover every theoretical aspect of this training then from tomorrow we go to the practical we show you things and how to navigate and all of that stuff. So yeah, I want over to Yemi now since nobody has any questions to ask. Okay. So this uh, comes to an end. The training for today comes to an end. Thank you all for joining. Thank you so much, Mr. Maiwa. That was an insightful section. Thank you. Really appreciate yeah, thank you. you. And thank you all. Thank you all for joining. So we'll see you tomorrow. If you have any questions or any concerns, I'm sure you will be added to the digital marketing group. So you can drop your concerns there and your questions as well. So thank you. This concludes our meeting. Have a nice day. All right. Yeah, bye. Thank everyone. you. Bye, guys. Thank you.